welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the electron flow in uh, the photosynthesis or the light reaction of the iron oxidizing bacteria okay so so chemolithotrophic iron oxidizing bacteria are here so this type of bacteria as you can see in this picture uh, they can transfer the electron from iron as you can see in this picture so fe2 plus is there and they transfer this this fe2 plus transfers one electron uh, to the system and it becomes Fe3 plus. Now this electron will flow from one electron carrier to the next electron carrier through the mobile electron carrier system and finally reaches to the terminal electron acceptor which is oxygen in this case too. So this process is also a non-cyclic process and uh, when it reaches to the oxygen, it will oxygen will be reduced to produce water. And during this course of uh, electron transport uh, proton gradient is made across the membrane and this proton gradient uh, helps to generate ATP by using the ATP synthase mechanism which is situated at the terminal point of this electron transport system. So let me take a color. Okay, now here uh, at the first point what, what we are having, we are having the rusty cyanine is the complex. Remember, if you don't know uh, the mechanism of electron flow in hydrogen bacteria or in uh, say uh, sulfur bacteria just go back and see those videos because it will help you to understand that so it is just like those sulfur bacteria or uh, hydrogen bacteria because uh, the same process the similar components are involving like cytochrome bc1 cytochrome c cytochrome a3 complexes and also mobile carriers like uh, quinones but instead of uh, in case of sulfur bacteria what we can find before this mobile carriers we are having the na we are having the fad plus and that fad plus will help to reduce nad plus in that case with the help of reverse electron flow in this case also we are having we are witnessing reverse electron flow but in this case the reverse electron flow is from quinone to nad plus okay anyways let's begin so uh, the starting point is the rusty cyanine complex okay this is a very important complex in this case in case of hydrogen bacteria we have seen the complex of hydrogenase enzyme which is the important one to carry the first electron so rusty cyanine here carries the electron from fe2 plus and fe2 plus is converted into fe3 plus in, uh, content okay and the electron that are transferred is carried to the rusty cyanine from the rusty cyanine it will be moved to the first electron carrier which can be cytochrome bc1 or it could be Okay, it could be directly cytochrome C, which is a mobile carrier. So, normal times it is transferred to the cytochrome BC1 complex. Now, from the cytochrome BC1 complex, there is a mobile carrier cytochrome C. Take the electron and it will bring it to another complex, which is called cytochrome AA3. Now, from the cytochrome AA3, uh, this electron is moved and lived out and it is been carried out it is been taken by oxygen which is a terminal electron acceptor so oxygen is there to accept the electron which is coming from cytochrome a3 it will accept the electron and convert itself into h2o or water molecule okay so as a result of all this processing as you can see as a result of this electron flow <coughs> in each step protons are start are continuously moving onto the outer side of the membrane and as a result of this protons are moving to the outside of the membrane it creates high proton rich content outside the membrane and low proton content uh, inside the cytoplasm okay and with the help of this density gradient at the terminal layer where we are having atps enzyme through the channels of atps this proton can easily be inserted onto the cytoplasm and it will help to rotate this uh, ATP synthase as a result ADP will combine with inorganic phosphate which is PI to convert to make ATP or adenosine triphosphate okay this is the simple single directional unidirectional electron flow we have witnessed but except for this unidirectional electron flow we also need to produce NADH which is also important ingredient for the light independent reaction of photosynthesis now for uh, reducing NAD plus to produce NADH we must reduce uh, this NAD plus right and the reduction for the reduction of NAD plus we must have electron transfer now the electron which are transferred to NAD plus are transferred from quinones so quinone are placed here they transfer its electron to NAD plus but normally what happens NAD plus is having higher negative value of reduction potential than quinone and it's a it's a genuine process or it's a scheme or it's a principle that electron can be flowed from only higher negative value of reduction potential to the 
positive value of reduction potential okay as in this case nad plus is having the negative value of reduction potential quinone is having positive value of electron potential so in natural process electron cannot be flown from quinone to nad plus to redu to reduce it so if it needs to flow it n it must go in the opposite orientation that means from the positive towards the negative reduction potential containing content so as for this purpose it needs a few amount of energy to do this because it is going against the natural law so it takes some energy and the electron will flow from quinone to nad plus to reduce this nad plus into nadh thus it is called the reverse electron flow in this case and when the produce NAD NADH ATP so take the ATP as energy source take NADH and also they take the carbon dioxide and they fix the carbon dioxide to produce the cellular material okay that's how the whole process has been worked out and I hope it will help you thank you